Okay, so I'm bringing you back in and hopefully um, I'm not going to make this tip too much. Um, let me just span this so you can see where it's at now. And then I'll step out. So you can see this four panels. I've shown you the space before, but um, it at least gives you <laughs> some sense of where I'm at right now. Just all right, so I'll pop out. Um, and I don't, I don't quite remember what I talked about the last time, but why don't I mention um, some of the tools that I'm using? Uh, the underpinning, if you remember, was a, an acrylic base, and so um, I use the acrylic periodically if I'm just going to block out a large area of dark. Um, but mostly, it was used as an underpinning. The, the help in something like that is I don't have a lot of dark pastel. I mean, you can you can order them, um, but you know they're fragile. They they take a lot when you're working this scale. Um, so the acrylic just happens to kind of block in that mass first for me. Um, the materials that I am using include a range. So there's some Othello and Derwent um, pastel pencils in here. Um, there are new pastels, which are on the harder end, um, and some like that. And um, there are soft pastels like Rembrandt's, um, Benelier. There are Richardson in here, which is, they're all beautiful. Um, but the softer I go, the more powder simply falls um, from the space. And of course, this is a large scale image. It's, um, I get a little loony sometimes. I don't use pastel very often, but when I do, they tend to be quite large scale. Um, and again, there's not necessarily um, you know, a direct <laughs> uh, reason for that besides the idea that, um, well, a few ideas actually. There's, there's the, on the one hand, it's fragile. It's, it's death, essentially. And I very much like the idea that um, these figures that are grown so firmly and, and formally um, and solidly are made of dust. It's a, it's a parallel um, that I find quite wonderful. Um, it's large scale. You know, you can see me in relationship to these. So, you know, they're they're a couple feet taller than me, and of course they're they're broader. So it's not the most logical. Um, but I don't always like being logical. Sometimes I just like to be inspired by by something as direct as pastel, and it's, um, you know, the colors just are rich and strong, uh, so there's, there's lots of reasons to use them. Um, anyway, that's one bucket. I have many buckets in the space. They're not organized. I've seen, you know, pastel artists who, who work with pastels regularly, and they have these wonderful setups, and they're so organized. I, I um, and so outside of that, I just, the logic is, um, and the organization, I guess, is not something that I think about enough. Um, this suits well enough for now. Um, so what else? What else? Uh, the rhythms, as you can see, are kind of pushing through the space. Um, I think I've mentioned before that my initial block-ins are just that. They're kind of these bold, strong, um, basic shapes. And then as I start to develop the figure, more information will come in. Um, and sometimes the information is quite Simplify, you know. So, in my mind, that's a that's a pretty resolved face, even though it's um, you know the colors are quite strong and, and one could consider it a block in. Um, I have to think about it. I have to think about do I want to take it further um, because I, I do respond to these very simple passages of color. Um, you know, on the other side of that, the flip coin, there are other figures that are. Um, that are more subtle, and so then I have to ask the question about, you know, can I can I have the subtlety in one and still retain the boldness in another? Is there enough of a conversation between um, the group? And you see me stepping around things. Um, you know, I, I lay things all around the place, and, and that's again just my approach. I'm up on a chair or I'm standing in front. Um, other things that happen here that I have to kind of think about are when I'm drawing. You know, there's there's an energy from the physical act of drawing, and so, you know, when I'm coming in, I'm swish swish swish, and, and then I'm maybe pausing and stepping back and understanding. Okay, do I respond to that? And, and I do, and I, I kind of respond to the joy of just uh, an engaged line in space. It doesn't necessarily um, 
speak directly to the figure, although it does too. I mean, so if I look at something like that, it's very landscape like, it's very, it's very, you know, it's very many things that are in our environment. Um, but mostly it's my hand, it's my energy, it's um, that tool. And, and so the proximity of the tool to my hand is another reason I like pastel so much. I, it's in my hand, it's not removed by a brush or um, by anything else. So um, it's coming. You know, I, I feel more secure and more confident as I'm building it because there's more discussion, there's more activity within the field. And so. You know, I'm getting a sense of who these characters are and why they're where they are. And, um, you know, the, the rise and the fall of these figures is a parallel for me uh, to living. And so that makes great sense. And um, sometimes things happen by accident. So, you know, I was putting in a dark ground and just happened to, to like the shape of the dark ground left and kind of came back in without really thinking about it with a, a violet. Um, and then those shapes, those leaf-like almost shapes, became something close to another shape that maybe was elsewhere. And so those abstract conversations become um, quite appealing. Um, the light and dark passages have an echo or sound to them that I respond to. The animals have a noise, the, the figure's gestures. So. There's a lot going on. It's it's not a particularly um, quiet piece. It's it's been a lot of noise and bravura and um, but then it has it has these these other things too that are quieter. Um, in some of the places, um, I'm just letting things happen. I'm just letting the powder drop and and the paint drip and the smudging of my hand exist and. So the letting go of control and then the refocusing, the kind of coming back in and molding or salting um, these forms, again creates a conversation. It creates some sort of space or air between one thing and another thing. Um, and it deepens the image for me. And so I'm quite drawn to it, even if I don't always understand what I'm doing. You know, so there's a, there's a give and take between the making um, of the piece and uh, I, you know, I think that's what's exciting for artists is that we don't always know where we're going. We're just going. We're <laughs> kind of moving towards something and we keep discovering it as we're making it. Um, so I'll bring you back when I have it further. Let me just turn